Hi guys, how are you doing? Why do I even ask? This has been a tumultuous couple of months and 2020 has already proven to be one of the worst years pretty much ever for anything that I can remember and the worst part is that I, I cannot exactly say why because apparently that demonetized his videos for some reason yeah, so yeah, we'll, I'm just gonna say that we're in a bit of a pickle Before we start with the songs, I'm obliged to tell you that you should stay at home, you should take care of yourself and take care of your family This will all eventually be over sooner or later, I hope so We will all get through this uh, But for now, I'm gonna talk about the songs So, how's music been lately? Surprisingly very good I think the spoiler alert, this top 20 has a very mediocre score like always because there's always like a balance of good and bad songs But most of the best stuff is either songs that feel absolutely irrelevant or songs that have stuck around for way too long The rest is really good like half of my best list is currently charting in or near the top 20 And there are much much better songs than the ones I put in my 2019 best list 2020 has been an improvement so far I don't even mind the amount of bubble bones we've been getting, which is when a record drops and puts its footprint all over the charts, because I often do a good job on clogging the shit that's been stuck there for way too long. Not a great job, mind you, there's still a lot of mediocrity and garbage that should have been gone by February, but you know what? Progress, I guess. Anyways, to keep these rankings fresh, I'm gonna implement a new rule, uh, if it's okay. If I already talked about a song in two or more videos, like other rankings or my year endless and my opinion hasn't really changed, I'll just skip it and instead talk about the next song on the charts. So for this video, I will not talk about three songs, them being Someone You Love by Louis Capaldi and Memories by Maroon 5 which still suck, and Circles by Post Malone which is still pretty awesome. And I'll replace them with number 21, number 22 and number 23 in the 100 this week. So, we cool? Cool, we cool. I just hate this. I'll sit on this for a few months until I can put into words why I hate it so much. But here's a couple of notes. Blackbird is a terrible artist. Blackbird has always sucked. It absolutely makes sense that this was bigger than Hot Girl Summer, which makes this even worse. Blackbird sucks at melodies. Blackbird isn't even good at being an asshole. In retrospect, Mansions wasn't a good album. This is currently Blackbird's picture in Wikipedia for some reason. And a letter to other music reviewers, please stop using the awful big budget music video. The other one with the lower budget is way better. Oh, no. it's her. Of course this became her next hit, I'm not surprised at all. I've seen myself from claims of players in between popular songs, but not only is this a blatant ripoff of some song about Jehovah's Witnesses, I'll get to that at the end of the year probably. But it's also a carbon copy of the Habana formula, both are retro latin flavor jams about a pretty bad boy featuring the biggest feature rapper at the time, and both with elaborate overrated David Myers music videos, both about the film industry, both becoming super hits after the previous singles failed. I wouldn't mind if the first hit in her new album cycle was just Havana again, if it were as good as Havana was, but this just sucks, it's, it doesn't sound sensual or fun at all, and uh... Oh, it's him. Have you ever heard the phrase too much of a good thing? I'm not even sure that he is good, but he's a downgrade from Junk Talk, and that's saying a lot because it is not a good time to defend Junk Talk right now. Working on a weekend like usual. I am just sick and tired of these guys. They they don't care anymore. They can do whatever they want. They're gonna be big forever. And when I say they, I mean Drake and only Drake because Future Squire has been in kind of a tightrope recently. He releases a lot of material and not much of it sticks out. To be honest, their music is reaching minimal levels of effort to the point where Drake is making the most basic dance challenges possible. Future is well future and both are making incomplete songs stitching them together into one mediocre bore and propelling it to the number two spot for months the first half doesn't build up to the second half the second half doesn't complement the first half if that wasn't enough they made such a dull track be about how good they think life is because they're rich drake doesn't pay his taxes because he's too turned up and future I don't know, likes fettuccine, who, who cares? I got tremendo for new fettuccine. I know this was released a few months ago, so how would they have known, but yeah, not in the mood for life is good, to be honest. Picture perfect, you don't need no filter. So, Yummy was a flop, after all. Uh, it's understandable, America isn't ready for that genius. But maybe the next Beaver song is gonna be, I don't know, unironically good. No, this one sucks. 
Catchy and harmless, sure, but the beat is much worse and somehow more generic and... Okay, you got the yummy yum, not the best lyric. I'll admit that. It is still way better than these icebreakers. Don't need a sponsor, no, you're the brand now. Heart full of equity, you're an asset. Am I right? My Colorado. Somehow he was more romantic as a teenager. Do you assume that he'll learn a bit of writing skills in the 10 years he's been around? But nope. Here he's like a dancing mustache robot who's trying to learn what romance is. Also, working with Quavo in 2020 is just so tacky, he makes everything sound dated immediately, I tell you. Rihanna coming back to music with her performance in the song is like the equivalent of Jack Nicholson coming out of retirement to be an extra on a David or Russell movie, like, wh why even bother? This dude sucks. When he's not trying to be boring, he's copying Young Thug, who, need I remind you, it isn't a good time to be fan of right now. Party next door is dry as hell. He, he said himself with his stage name. The party's not here, it's somewhere else. Next. She don't wait in lines if it's too long. Who cares anymore? This was the polarizing song of the winter, but now no one talks about it, and it's only big thanks to radio and residual streams. It's just mediocre. Who cares anymore? This was the polarizing song of the winter, but now no one talks about it, and it's only big thanks to radio and residual streams. It's just mediocre. Took 20 bitches on my first VK. And this is just hot by Young Talk, but worse. And again, not a good time to be a fan of same features, same flow, similar tempo. It even has similar lines. Everything burning around me on lit. From what I've heard from him, Nav is the disposable version of Ghana. And that's just the biggest accomplishment on uselessness. Why are we letting Nav Nav a hit anyways? I mean, isn't he like a punchline in hip hop? What's next? A Ross song becoming a hit? Uh, this this joke is not panning out, so I'm I may delete it or keep this in. I don't know. When the bones are good, the rest don't matter. I actually really like Martin Morris as a country singer. It's just a shame that her first taste of pop fame was a song as irritating as the mill. Her singles are way better. It is Mercedes, I could use a love song. Girl was going to be an honorable mention last year until it dropped out too soon. This new song is... Alright, I listened to it many times and got no real thoughts about it to be honest, but I do see why it's cool that it's become a big hit before it was pointed out to me I didn't quite sing in that a female solo country song finally hitting the top 20 for the first time in a while is a big feat. And we even have another one near it, which is better and I'll cover later. Take that, Nashville, even though the song is pretty much a pop ballad, more than a country song, but still, you go, girl. I'm a savage. Yeah. It is definitely a Megan Thee Stallion song, I'll say that. It's not bad, not the best or worst on that DP, and I'm glad that she managed to release that project considering her label issues. But have you heard BITCH? That one's like, really good. Yeah, the Lil Mosey song is higher than the Megan Thee Stallion song. It's a pretty good sample. I love how he had a similar song that's pretty much just like this one, swampy R&B sample with a similar flow, but I guess that one didn't have a real standout title like Blueberry Fago. Is, is it just me or does Blueberry Fago kind of sound like an old timey slur? I don't know. It, it just sounds wrong. Am I the only one who hears it? This gives me a lot of Carrie Underwood vibes, the vocal performance, the writing, the melodies, even the fact that both were American Idol finalists. I didn't even know that show was still on, to be honest. I like Carrie Underwood more than most, so I do like this. Yeah, this is fine, although Halsey and Bad Bunny both have their songs out right now about hope in their ex as well, but not really. Ever since After Hours came out and gave us a shit ton of great The Weeknd material, Hell, even way before that when it was just blinding lights alongside it. Heartless felt like such a pointless single. Doesn't even fit with the album, the hook sucks, and it pales in comparison to the rest of his catalog, but... There is one part that I really, really like. The album has claimed like 5 or 6 spots of my personal best moments in pop music of 2020. The sax solo in In Your Eyes, the beat switch in the title track, the outro in Faith, Honestly, all of Savior Tears. The Elton John interpolation is scared to live. Actually, scratch that. No, I don't like that one. And Heartless is one of them in the form of its bridge. It's it's really good. 
good shit. I really like this. They should have been the whole song, honestly, not just. It's okay. I don't know. I've been listening to this song nonstop for nearly a year now, and I've always thought it was just okay. In my opinion, Physical is also just okay, and so was most of her album, Future Nostalgia. I'm just not impressed by her new direction at all. Out of the many, many 80s retro throwbacks to become hits recently, this is one of the lesser ones in my opinion. Personally, I find the beat work kind of stiff and flavorless. It isn't really Calvin Harris or Daft Punk, it's more Charlie Puth and Maroon 5, I guess. I'll even take the Sisa JT1 from Trolls 2 over this, to be honest. Lyrical content is good, although the hook is pretty familiar. Don't show up, don't come out, don't pick up the phone. So yeah, this is decent, but I'm really hoping that the rest of her material moving forward is better than decent. I, I'm hoping that it becomes good. Yeah, yeah, this will do for now. Speaking of Charlie Puth, this is like the really, really good version of how long I didn't know that we deserve. Now more than ever. This song is gonna be the death of me, I swear. On the one hand, we got the people who love it, enjoy it, listen to it every day, blissfully ignorant that it was produced by one of the most repugnant people currently working in the music business. On the other hand, we have the people who hate the song and love to remind you the fact that it was produced by one of the most repugnant people currently working in the music business. For them, it's like the Bohemian Rhapsody movie of songs. Then there's my side that knows that Dr. Luke is one of the most repugnant people currently working in the music business, but it also has to admit that this song is really good. Doja Cat is full of personality. She manages to balance the act of being a charismatic rapper and a smooth singer so effortlessly. And I will revoke my music rate badge for this. The groove in the beat is really fucking good, I'm sorry. Like the only real criticism I can think of is that the hook is kind of unintelligible. But that's honestly about it and it's a very small nitpick. If it's any consolation, Dr. Luke has also produced a good chunk of her album, which I have no guilt to admit it sucks ass. But I also feel some guilt for listening to the damn thing and giving him money. Also, it totally should have been Bitch Macau instead. Oh no, it's fuck Dr. Luke lives anyway. This was about to hit the number one spot when I made my winter ranking right here. And now that it is spring, it's no longer a number one. It is sort of poetic. Don't you think? There are songs that I first listen to and think, I don't get this. But there's no way I don't cave in and this doesn't eventually grow on me. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. I wasn't surprised to be right with this one, but I also was surprised at how fast it clicked with me. I love this bit, how it contrasts the goofiness of the sound effect with the ominous strings of the sample. And Roddy Rich is one of the most dynamic rappers I've heard in a while. The amount of flow scrambling into the song is super impressive. People have compared it to Old Town Road, but I'm happy that it wasn't as big as that. It would have been exhausting and gives off a completely different vibe. Although, what the vibe is exactly, I'm not sure. Should I take it more seriously or less seriously than I do? Also, I'm happy that it's not number one anymore because this next one totally deserved the, the spot. I mean, it's one of the best songs in the home 100. Holy shit. Imagine how good of an artist you have to be for this masterpiece to not only not be amongst the best songs in his discography, but also not even the third or fourth best song in the album. What a rush of adrenaline this is. Euphoria. Pure euphoria. Holy crap, this is just so good. It's amazing how the... Well... How do I put this? The simp e subtext can be ignored by the context of it being just a perfect song. Holy shit. How many fish has the romantic interest doesn't hurt either? It might have been a nightmare. Billie Eilish will continue to run circles around the rest of her competition until the day she dies. And based on the lyrical content of this song, I am hoping that day isn't soon. I surely feel bad saying stuff like that, praising her so much, it's a lot of pressure to put into a teenager. Rest assured, I don't really have anything bad to say about this one. I could like try to come up with some criticism about how it's not as experimental or dark sounding as most of her discography but not only is this production still pretty damn good the lyrics only make up for it this song is just 
Way too good to be on the Hot 100 and that's not a small feat considering how much quality is on there right now. Not that that's reflected on the score which is... It's okay. Again, I don't know how to end videos anymore so... Just a reminder that you should stay at home. You should take care of yourself, take care of your families. Don't go out if you have to, wash your hands. If you have to go outside, please use masks and take precautions. This will all be over sooner or later, we just have to get through this and be careful. See you soon, I hope.